We've all seen those websites that try to lure you in with something intriguing like a photo or a snazzy headline and then make you hit next over and over and over for you to get anywhere and whilst you hit next 800 times you'll be teased with a bunch of images that may not be as interesting or even related to the hook that first tried to bring you in. I rarely fall for these, but I ended up on one of these lists that promised you rare photos from history uh, that will puzzle you. I think that was the title, rare, rare photos. Yeah, I think it was rare photos from history that will puzzle you. The page that brought me in to this site uh, far from puzzled me. Um, yeah, in fact, I, I, think, I was wondering how stupid they think we are. This particular image was something that I immediately recognised and I also knew that the words accompanying it were just plain wrong. <laughs> what it claimed was that from the explosion point to the camera, the shockwave took exactly 16 milliseconds to travel. So let's take a second to examine some basic physics and do some back of the napkin calculations. So first up, the blast wind at sea level may exceed 1000 kilometers an hour, which is about 300 meters a second. This is approaching the speed of sound through air. We can do some basic calculations around this. So 300 meters a second uh, divided by a thousand milliseconds in a second gives us 0.3 meters per millisecond or 30 centimeters. Therefore, in 16 milliseconds, that blast wave should travel approximately 4.8 meters. Looking at the photo, you might think that that's actually feasible. However, the gun in the photo is no normal cannon. It's famously known as Atomic Annie. If we look at it just a little bit closer, you'll realize that this M65 Atomic Cannon might actually be a bit bigger than your average field cannon. That gun is 26 meters long. So in 16 milliseconds, a hypothetical blast wave from the gun tip could only ever get about one fifth of the way down the barrel let alone reach over to where the camera is as claimed on this website. This Daily Forest article is clearly very wrong. And to be honest, I think a lot of these sites are just eye candy to draw the user in for advertising purposes and accuracy takes second place to that. However, the facts behind this picture are quite interesting if we ignore the site's version of a fact and look at the actual truth instead. The event depicted in this photo is really called Upshot Not Whole Grable. Yeah, it's quite a mouthful. <laughs> In the previous video linked up here, I covered Operation Castle and specifically the Castle Bravo detonation. After Operation Castle came Operation Upshot Not Whole. This was a series of 11 tests and one of these tests was Grable, where the G means gun. The point of this test lies with the cannon that you see in this photo, which is your aforementioned gun. Grable was a 280mm artillery fired atomic projectile, otherwise known as an AFAP, which is a shell fired from the atomic cannon, also known as atomic Annie. It was fired at, in UTC time, 3.30 in the afternoon on May the 25th, 1953. The launch and detonation positions are well documented and because we know exactly where this was fired from and where it went to, we can do some more math. If we take the latitude and longitude and do a calculation over the great circle distance, we come out with 11.14 kilometers. Because we know this and we know how fast the blast wave moves, the blast wave can now be calculated. So if we've got 11.14 kilometers, well, that is 11,140 meters, and a blast wave traveling at 300 meters a second would take 37 seconds to reach the camera. If I show you the video that this image was taken from, then you will get a real sense of timings. Armies 280 millimeter gun. 
When this shot was added to the program, some additional effects tests were scheduled to observe results of the low burst height. Since no gun-type assembly had been detonated since the Hiroshima bomb, the weapons development scientists had on this shot their first opportunity to study the nucleonic behavior and fireball configuration of such a device. Yield 15 kilotons. So let's just go back to that silly web page for a second and not just marvel at how inaccurate it is but also reflect on how many people would read something like this and then blindly believe the words that they've read. Especially in troubled times such as these, it's important to question the information you see before you. It's equally important to qualify the provenance or where it came from as it is to you know, check whether that information is even correct. As shown here, if you're not careful, somebody could be making money off of your miseducation. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, feel free to hit subscribe, and thanks for watching.